What's happening, y'all? Welcome to the show. You are tuned in to the Wrestling Junkies Podcast. I am Keto Case, alongside with Jaw Earned the Golden Sun, Rock Star. Do yourselves a favor, give us a subscribe, follow the junkies, and that's the bottom line. What up, junkies? Welcome back to the Wrestling Junkies podcast. We are here. What's up, everybody? Chris, say what's up. Hey, what's up, guys? Two times, two times. Booker T. Yes, we got Chris back in the mix. Chris is back. Welcome back, Chris. Thank you, guys. Good having Casey's back. We got the crew back together. Yeah, we we have to call it reinforcements because wrestling has some shit. It has <laughs> some shit, and we need extra minds on it. Yeah, yeah, so man. Let's, let's get this shit going, bro. What's where? Where should we fucking start with this crazy ass shit in in the WWE universe? I mean, uh, should we just start off with the biggest news that there is? We could, or we could. Yeah, I mean, we which, might as well just go to it? it. The Rock is not fighting Roman anymore. That the Roman versus Rock match is off. That's not happening anymore, and we're getting yeah. Hollywood heel Rock. He's oh coming. yeah! And you know what? <laughs> the people called for this. The people swerved the storylines, dude. Can't believe it! Like they were upset. They put a bunch of dislikes, and then instead of going the old Vince McMahon way, just throwing it down our throats. <laughs> they actually listen to the fans. I, I still think it, it was a whole work the entire time. I think they knew it was going to happen. They knew Cody was over. They knew having Cody go out there and basically give away his match was going to garner a lot of heat. And I think they just roll with it. I think maybe in the beginning they were trying to tease Rock and Roman, seeing how that went. But then when Cody, they got the reaction from Cody when he went and gave up his spot. And they're like, oh, no, no, we, we can't do that. Let's just go so you with think this. this is, you think this has been their plan or something along the lines? Maybe not their specific plan, but they were planning on swerving all along. I do. I think it's. I think so. It's just too much of a coincidence that this all happened just like that, you know, because it happened think, so fast. I guess you guys. I feel like they were running their Vince Holton McMahon old storyline, and it backfired, and they actually went with the crowd this time. That's how I feel. I, I'm with Ernest on that one. I'm, I'm gonna go with the kind of old fashioned. Oh, if Rock versus Roman. That's gonna be a big bill. And let's just put it there. Let's figure a way to slide it in. So they did that. That Rhodes promo will bring them into the storyline, and then that shit got disliked. You know, it was it was kind of like like how the Daniel Bryan thing, but more natural. It felt natural because you know the dislikes on the video and all that bullshit, a lot of the booze, and then Most. The Rock had to come out. You know, like the co what did what did he call it? the fans? The Cody the Cody Rhodes Cody Cry Baby. <laughs> it's a good one. That's he still cool. has it. Still yeah, got it. I mean, just like, just like the Bobby Lashley thing, like the crowd is starting to dictate what the fuck they want. That's why I right. see it. You know, Bobby yeah. Lashley was trying to go heel, and then hell, you're going to face and same my, thing with my, this. We... My question, though, with Cody first initially giving it away, what sense does it make? Like he never explained why. Like it would have made more sense if somehow before, after that SmackDown and before the press conference. He explained like why he came to that decision because that kind of makes him look like a chump, in a way. Like, oh, I changed my mind, you know. Yeah, his only thing was that it was basically like, well, instead of me destroying you, let's have your own family destroy you. And it was kind of like, huh? How does that make any sense? So you're basically saying that The Rock is a bigger star than you. He's a bigger draw than you, and he deserves this spot more than you, Cody. So, but so that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think that they actually did that knowingly, on purpose. And then because I think for, everything, for, go on. I think everything improv, even the slap. No, that slap was not improv. Cody, Cody, bro, he braced for it. He had I mean, to know even, that slap was coming. I think even Cody knew, but I think the rest didn't know because the reaction of everyone was great. It wasn't I that hard slap just, either. It wasn't. And Cody was not, but. Was, from that slap, he went down to a knee that was like the gentlest slap ever. The swerve was awesome. Like that's if you really look back at that promo, it's a badass promo. Yeah, it got attention all over. You know, like 
It got TMZ. It got ESPN's attention. I mean, wrestling's at an all-time high right now. It's being covered through all platforms. Before it was just, you know, the forums. Now it's just on a bigger, it's on a bigger platform right now for everybody. And it's definitely yep. taking the uh, the news away from uh, the old chairman, which is a good thing. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I think that's exactly what they wanted to do, and that's why they brought Rock in. They yeah. knew they that all the attention would be focused on Rock. Yeah. At first, they thought he was going to come in like a like your your generic ass rock but we got hollywood rock now so. is he hollywood rock though i feel like this is more like 97 ma- like like nation when he was the leader of the no. nation banter i think he's gonna show a new version of rock i think it's a new version time. with with spits and pieces of hollywood rock thrown in more you know with a fam more family oriented because they gave him that cue to attack his family, so Rock got to turn at that moment. So now he gets to be like united with with Roman. I really think still in the future, after every the death settles, I think Rock will be still Rock screw. Roman. Yeah, or you maybe think for next year. Screw, Rock will screw Roman this year. Yeah, definitely. I yeah. think I think so. Screwing Roman this year at Mania, give Cody that win. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't know if Rock wants to come back for another match because he's only contracted with TKO for that one match to get his his settlement for the board. He is contracted to have one match with WWE again, and he's gone on record to say he wants to get it out of the way as soon as possible. Mania would be the most mm. thing to do, you know? See, yeah, but he's, he a rest- he's a wrestler, bro. He's going to have the bug, and he's going to yeah. be like, oh, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do one more. Wrestlers always end up like doing more. Yeah, They're not just gonna do it, one. It, it, it's it's still, <laughs> is it still going to allow him to do that? That's the whole thing. It, look how long it's taken him to come back already. It's been how many years since we've seen Rock in a actual wrestling ring and been active and taking bumps? It's cause man, he's been trying all this shit out there that hasn't worked. The the <laughs> DC shit. Um, what else? XFL. I mean, there's like now he joined the fucking. Now he joined the fucking oh, yeah, time, XFL. bro. Yeah. Now you join Roman Reigns faction, the fucking family's gonna burn because of Rock. <laughs> he's a failing. Uh, he's been f- killing fucking franchises. Right, exactly. That's the thing. I think his even like <laughs> I think it's the opposite. I think he wanted he kind of lobbied to get Roman, and uh, the reaction was not what he expected. He thought he was gonna get no. all love and praise. Yeah, uh, and it, this isn't. Uh, well, even back in like 2013, you could say that he, you know, yeah. Punk probably should have uh, been main event of that WrestleMania instead of Cena. Oh, I Rock love that when when Punk took a jab at the fans. Where were you guys oh, back yeah. then? Dude, he was <laughs> honestly. Had but, his aside from the the ending angle, Punk was like the best thing about that fucking press conference. Like everything he yeah. said was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you would need to punch someone. If if there's a situation between between two men, you handle it with violence. You got to punch someone. It's like a <laughs> background just staring at him. Like, what? Yeah, oh, I don't know. I, you know that place? Think... Uh, it only had like two two thousand people, or like it wasn't packed. But on camera, it oh. looked it looked and sounded like there was a shit ton of people there. But there there was a bunch of seats that weren't occupied. No, because they're there for, those people just want to try to party a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was a lot of people in Vegas mm-hmm. for the Super Bowl. I know. And That's the why they were was there free anyway, so anybody could go. They were giving out right. VIP packages. I don't know how many people bought those, but they were ridiculously expensive. They were like uh, up I in see, the thousands. For what? Uh, there were like VIP packages where you could like go behind the scenes. You could meet a wrestler, and you could like ask questions. So is that, gonna, you're obsessed with is that so? That tag right. team match is that is that going to happen night one? Uh, yeah, I'm calling it. The tag match is happening, especially with that teaser, the trailer that they put. Have you guys yeah, seen the yeah. WrestleMania trailer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah, the it's... teasing it, so it's it's got to happen. There was a yeah, right. reason. But like Casey said just before we got on the air, uh, Seth Rollins wrestling with a bum knee two nights in a row. How's that gonna work out for him? He's gonna suck it the fuck up, bro. Yeah. Will Seth Rollins That's... be healthy enough by Mania to do two matches? He's gonna do two two nights and he's done for the whole like till he arrests his shit. Watch, he's gonna lose. Go work around it the first match, you know, and then maybe play up some sort of injury angle the second night. Yep. 
I think they got to leave mm-hmm. Cody. Like Cody's got to get like they got to leave him lane on the first night. That way he comes limping in like the second night or something. Yeah, they got to give a lot of heat on Cody. A lot of sympathetic uh, heat there coming into that match with Roman. They could get a good think, of a pop. You think Rock and and Thing will beat Cody and Tyler? And I think Seth? so. I think Rock and Roman will beat Cody and Seth night one. There's no reason to have Cody and Seth win that tag match. Yeah, and I agree. then uh, I'm gonna say you know Seth goes on and loses the match, and Cody wins the match on night two. Who does Seth lose to? Ah, see now that's an interesting thought. Yeah, that's what we're building to this week. Mm-hmm. Up, you know, lots of uh, qualifying matches going on. We've got yeah. Drew McIntyre has already qualified. AJ's on a damn losing streak. Ever since he dropped the OC, he can't buy a win. It's going to be <laughs> him and LA Knight at the chamber. I think. Do you think it's going to be those building... two at the chamber? I think they're the building a feud. I think those two will win it. Win the chamber? Be Drew. Or... Yeah, what? the chamber it has to be LA Knight or Drew to win that shit. I'm kind of on fire even without the title right now. His Drew, chase is kind of amazing. Drew his chase for the just, title uh, is like <laughs> he's fucking killing his promos. He really stepped think, up on the promos. I, I think he can like survive to like next year without a championship yet. No, I think he's gonna win the belt. I think he has to win the belt yeah. in media with the amount of. I, think, I mean, with with the character change he's done at the promo styles he's been doing, he's been killing it. This entire like character change that he's yeah. kind of like a bitter heel. He's just telling the truth, you know. It, it's really done a lot of good for for Drew. He was really stale for a while there after his last uh, title run during the pandemic. You know, he uh, sword, he lost it. The Clash of the gimmick. Castle, the sword gimmick. <laughs> it was all just wasn't working. This heel turn was probably the best thing that they've done for him. I agree, I agree. Um, he's had the best storyline, the best move. I think LA Knight has to get that pop win, you know. Even Orton, fuck, we don't know. Orton's still in the mix, bro. He hasn't fought yet in the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, he qualified, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, I, I don't know. Did he did already? Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that. He qualified on SmackDown. He's going oh, over. He did. I think he beat Seth. You think it's going to be Orton at Mania? I think Orton it's going to be They're going to run it back again? Yeah, Orton, Orton goes over. Mm-hmm. Get that epic match. That. He's older, wiser now. I think he could be that locker room leader. Can he? Uh, how many years does uh, Randy have left with that back injury, though? And is mm. that, I mean, is that going to start affecting him? I don't know if you'd want to put a title on somebody who just came back from back surgery. He came back jacked. He looks good. He looks really good in uh, ring shape. He so. looks good, but how is his body going to hold up? Because it looked mm. like, I don't know if he was selling or not, but he was clutching his back a lot in that match on SmackDown. Every fucking hard bump he took on his back, you could see him clutching it in pain. I don't know if he was just selling or if that's legit. Right, I know. <laughs> Good seller. Best I mean, Randy's one of the best I, sellers there is. I He's always think that too. When I see like crazy wincing, I'm like, oh shit, did they actually is that real? It's like there's a the Undertaker suplex Ric Flair at WrestleMania eighteen off the top rope. And then Ric Flair is just like ah, ah, like really, really loud. I I gotta wonder, I was like, that's that there's something. Half of that is real. Flair always yeah, knew how real, to, to make it look real, though. Yeah, Flair always looked like he was, he was always legit in pain. But yeah, I agree. I think Drew should go on to. Uh, I mean, although yeah, I can it, see it, Orton doing it, but it's uh, in I the want stars. To Drew. It's written in the <laughs> WWE stars that Drew got this. He's too but much he, on fire. But you know, the, the, the WWE likes to swerve shit, you know. But has he yeah, signed yet? So, no, still, right? He has not resigned yet. No, not yet. Yeah, oh, I believe no. his contract is upcoming after Mania, so we'll see. If they end up putting the title on him, he'll probably stick around. If they can not, do it. He's gonna go to TNA mm-hmm. with the belt. They'll do like another. He's gonna uh, go AEW, bro. No, yeah. I can't see Drew going to Did... AEW. You don't think he fits there? I don't think he, he join the House of Black. Nah, <laughs> House, of Bl- House of Black is on their way back. Oh. No, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're done. They're, they're, they're contracted. They're still contracted for a couple of years, and they even said so. They did. They uh-huh. said that wasn't true. Oh wow! Oh, shit. I thought it was real. Nah, coming back already. It's just Meltzer bullshit. <laughs> Typical Meltzer. Meltzer. Yeah, he thinks he knows everything, but he really doesn't. He contradicts. Uh, he, he's he's it was something to do with the Rock storyline. Like uh, two weeks in a row, he's like the Rock and Roman is set. There's no there's no questions about it. There's no yeah. switching. And then now he's like, yo, this is their plan all along. 
So it's just like, which one is it? I like it though. This is even more unpredictable than it was three weeks ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love what they're doing Fuck with the yeah. swerves, and and we're apparently well, we're getting even more swerves too. This is not just they're the just end of it. getting better. They're just getting started, and he just keeps us guessing and guessing. Yeah. And guessing. You see the live show where our truth fought Gunther? <laughs> nah, he fucked him up. No, yeah, he fucked him up. Our, our truth was like like Gunther was jobbing to him for like a little stint. Wow, and, and the crowd was going crazy for it. So like shit. <laughs> Who would that you get to see Gunther future? fight at Mania? He, it looks oh, like Jay. you got to for Jay, but I still want Jay versus Jimmy at Mania. They want that Mania match, and I think this would be the year to I do mean, it. I mean, if it's going to be Gunther, I mean, it has to be like Kofi, because I mean, or one of those guys, because they've been feuding with that faction for a minute now. Yeah, but Kofi and, is just fighting the, the tag team. Gunther's got his, his shit with Jay. That's why they're all teaming tonight. Yeah. What about um Braun? Well, it is Jay. Uh, Braun Breaker. He hasn't uh, made a decision he... yet, I think. No decision has made of where he's going yet. Mm-mm, not yet. I think he, he ends up on Raw, though. I think he ends up Where's on Brock because Lesnar he's, at? he's got that beef with Judgment Day. What, what, what spot was Brock, Brock Lesnar on? He's a free agent. I never had a, a brand. He huh? never got mm-hmm. He was a free agent, so he could go anywhere. he just show Who? up and kick ass. <laughs> Brock. Who? Brock. Who's, who's that? <laughs> oh, oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> Forgot. Who's talking about? He's getting the he's getting the Chris Benoit treatment right now. Fuck. Yeah, he is. That's, that's fucked up. They actually erased his uh his win against Taker. Damn. No, wow. no way. So the Undertaker. Yeah. Oh, so he only lost to Roman. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. I think they kind of hinted like they're taking away anything that Vince has done too, because they said uh Pat McAfee is undefeated in WrestleMania, but he lost to Vince. <laughs> But technically, that was a non-sanctioned match, so I guess he still is. But it's yeah, it's kind of indicative. I think they're just trying to get rid of everything Vince and Brock related. Fuck, well, there's no more kiss my ass club. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the last, does. the last, the last member is suing him. Essentially, I was a. I was an honorary member of the Kiss My Ass Club. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I kind of got sour on on Dwayne. Like I went to this deep dive, uh, oh, but with Dwayne Johnson and his ego, because I was absolutely convinced that he actually got kind of bothered by the, uh, the all the fan backlash because he made a he made a distinction between Cody Crybabies, Cody fans, and Cody. So if you're if you're being a wrestling heel, just just lump them all into one. One thing, Cody himself is a crybaby, you know? Like, yeah. like he was doing shoot, and then he went into a work. But I think, obviously, to cut a good promo, some of it has to come from a real place. So I think he definitely yeah. was shocked and surprised that he wasn't, like, totally, yeah, I, that the fans didn't want that match. I think we got a taste of the old school rock when he first started talking shit to the crowd. He gave that, like, a little taste of that again. Like, yeah, his real feelings and shit. Eating your chicken nuggets and going on live. <laughs> Right now, with you right now, Kyle is not finishing his story. Yeah, yeah, he, he, that was even he gave us a taste of rock, bro. Like the, the heel rock. I don't, think heel. Heel. I don't yeah, think that is. get a full blown heel rock, though. I think it's gonna be a bit of a tweener. That he still got a lot of people cheering for him. So I don't think he can oh, get that's always. blown. You I know? mean, same thing with Roman. Roman has a lot of fans still, even though he's a fucking heel. People still acknowledge him throwing up the mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I, I just as, as a kid, I thought the Rock was. I always liked him as a heel. As soon as he started doing the elect, like when he got kicked out of the corporation, I still kind of liked him. But when he turned into like the electrifying one, I was like, "This is too much, dude." I I I liked him obviously, and he is one of my top two favorites from the Attitude Era. But Austin was my number one guy, so I just kind of got reminded. I'm like, dude, I was never really the biggest fan of The Rock. Um, mm-hmm. At Monday Night Raw, after the, the SmackDown where Cody handed off his uh, shot to him, um, they started off the show with Rocky. I knew that was going to happen. The whole fucking crowd's chanting <laughs> Rocky stuck. I was like, oh, wow, this is great. This is awesome. Um, but, yeah, I think he's, he's much better. His natural persona is that of... Uh, Shit talking fucking jock from the uh University of Miami, yep. you know? Like that's that that's who they are. That's who he is. Yep. I just I started diving in. I'm like, dude, he has all these failures. He's just coming back to WWE because that's he where he knows he's gonna get love. 
Like, yeah, I don't, I don't he's coming back. He's licking his wounds. <laughs> back home. But yeah, dude. I mean, when when it's a, when it's a surprise entrance, like when he first came out at that SmackDown, obviously huge pop in the building. But once after the reality set in, everyone's all like, "No, wait a minute, man. We thought this was Cody's shot, Cody's story." And so the uh, the I what do we call him the uh, internet re- the IWC came to a bat for Cody. <laughs> Which is yeah, it's this amazing is crazy. to see all the fans have all that pool. Uh, yeah, I mean, fuck yeah. It's showing that we got the leverage now. If we don't like someone, they won't put them on. It's, I, I want to see the future of WWE and see how we're going to push these rest of these stars because if fans start dictating it, you know, maybe we'll get some cool ass wrestlers out of this. You know, instead of the uh, Vince just like dropping it down our goddamn throats and like, take it. Take the storyline. Brian, Brian, what is it, Brian Gewurz? He's back. He's a Rock's writer, and he used to be a writer for WWE back in the day. And so the word around yeah. town is, is that if they have to get rid of Paul Levesque, if he knows something, if something comes out, then Brian Gewurz slips right into that spot. No, he did better not. With the company? He was a Rock only. He didn't want yeah, the company. He's help- oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. He's helping out with the Rock storyline. But that's, that's what it. some of the people suspect Man. online. I like Triple H. You can't give. You can't take this away from the click. I mean, if Triple H ends up being someone that knew about what's going on, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> right. you have to to? Shit. I mean, DKO wants to get rid of anything and anybody who had any connection to Vince and knew about what was going on. They don't want anything to do with that anymore. It's a bad look for your company, especially with them going to Netflix. Getting the doubt even further to the world, they don't want the Vince McMahon shit looming behind them. Then fire them all. (laughs) (laughs) Part of it. But did you (laughs) Ashley Massaro? The the whole deal what happened to her with tribute the troops? Or she got raped, right? Mm -hmm. Who raped her? Army people? Marines? Doctors? Yeah, he sedated her and he ended up raping her. And uh, the Marines or the Marines? The Marine doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Vincent Johnny just basically told her, "Hey, just keep it quiet, so we can keep our relationship with the military." Yeah, damn. They told her, "Don't say anything about it." Vince didn't deny that, though. Didn't Vince and WWE they denied having any knowledge of it or something? But she said that, like that. That's what the whole point of that thing that got released recently pointed out that, like, they did know. Yeah, I, I heard that before too. It's not the first time I've heard this either. Mm-hmm. Right, it's just like officially, and because of everything that's going on legally, uh, it's like official now. And even you, yeah, uh, Paul London, was saying some stuff about how he knew what was going on and how that really affected Ashley and her her mental state. Because that was his girlfriend at the time. Fucking fucking Vince was a mobster, bro. Even sure. in the eighties with Pat Patterson, he was uh for sexually harassing um, male. Uh, people. Yeah, young ring boy. I think as an adult, his, his brother has a podcast. Uh, that dude killed himself. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know his name, unfortunately. I his name. But that's but yeah, another that one, too. And then, yeah, it's like fucking Pat Patterson. Like, I've heard a lot of stuff. I, I saw this old interview, and it was uh, Larry King, 1992. He had uh, Bruno San Martino and Vince McMahon on, and, you know, about allegations. They were happening uh, back then about the Ring Boy scandal. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't talk about Rita Chatterton, but uh, Bruno was just like, "Yeah, we've always heard these stories about Pat Patterson and uh, was some some Ronnie Garvin, I think was another name that they were like uh, diddling young boys or whatever." And all these like Bruno never saw anything, but he heard stories, and so Vince was like, "Ah, you heard a story? Is that right, Bruno? Like fucking jackass?" But uh. <laughs> Yeah, none, none of this shit is old. <laughs> this, which, like, is, which is really Bruno unfortunate. For ten years, I'm sure he, I'm sure he saw some shit. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, here's champion before uh, Vince was actually in charge of it. Mm-hmm. That's why fucking Bret Hart didn't survive in that business. <laughs> fucking left. It's, it sucks because uh, I, you know, Bret Hart came out and said that like he's embarrassed and ashamed that he ever held Vince in high regard. I mean, there's a lot of these guys that looked at him. Like, all all my favorite wrestlers, I'm sure at some point in time, looked up to Vince as a fucking father figure. Mm -hmm. He did. Shit, Vince was all her daddies. Surrounded by his uh, licensing and marketing 
franchises, you know? Like, mm-hmm. can, staring his action figure right in the fucking face. Fucking... Uh, fucking face. <laughs> he's a face-shitting monster. But, you know, you try to separate the fucking... The, the, the actual person and then the things that they accomplish, you know, at this point, I'm like, whatever. Like that. Yeah, uh, bring back Chris Benoit. Hall of Fame. Go on. <laughs> I don't think there's any chance of that happening. Chance. No Brock Lesnar <laughs> in the Hall of Fame then, too. Shit. That no. sucks, dude. Yeah, that's, that's done. That's a wrap for yeah. him. So was, was, he, was he really part of it? I heard he was denying that shit. Uh, he supposedly got photos and he was sharing photos. He never did anything Texas. physically, as far as I know, but he was accepting the the favors, so to speak, from Vince. They were but supposed to meet ask? up, but uh, due to weather, I guess the aircraft wouldn't take off, so that's the only right reason why he didn't go. But Brock, he was named in, yeah, photos, Texas, a lot, a lot of shit with Brock. Did he ask for those, uh, for that content? According to them, Vince sent it as an incentive for him to resign. That's a that's an important detail. If this, if he's not asking for anything, and he's just receiving it. He was like sharing how... the content as well. Oh, okay, he was sharing it. Shit. Yeah, it wasn't just I got the content. I'm keeping it for myself. It was he was passing around to the boys. Too. Did yeah. he think that him and Vince have like the same sense of humor? Did he think it was some elaborate fucking joke? That I don't know. I'm sure I mean, I'm not he, trying he to, was like... protected by Vince, I'm sure, you know? It's just uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, all the sexual the movements we saw on TV with Vince were... Uh, it's real! It's real! <laughs> it's just a character, man. I'm confessing. With his, his, not, his, his own work. I mean, that was probably the best segment ever. He's sitting there, yeah. her legs are up, and he's going nuts. And I'm like, dude, he's doing that in his office. <laughs> Fucking the dude, WWE he... headquarters. Yeah. WWE never lied, bro. They just told it to her. They <laughs> rubbed it in her face. They did. All the segments of Vince cheating on his wife with all the divas. Oh, dude. <laughs> I, heard a, I heard a story from Francine. <laughs> Remember Francine from uh, yeah. Yeah, ECW? From ECW. So when they had relaunched it, WWE CW, uh, they, she was on there, but she wasn't getting like TV time, and she was just wondering like why. And someone told her, like, you know, the way to get Vince's attention is, like, you know, wear, like, a low cut, show a lot of cleavage and put some oil on your chest and, like, lean over his desk. And she's like, I'm not going to do that. And then John Laurinaitis, or I guess somehow she was talking to him, and he told her that she's, like, looking at paint dry. So she's just really boring. He's like, that's why you're not getting work. You need to, like, show something, and then we'll, we'll give you some TV time. Uh. She told him about yeah, ECW. <laughs> yeah, which she, was, uh, because she was very provocative in ECW. Her. He, she, he, she had a conversation with Vince. He's like, I don't know what you do. She's like, Well, don't you have the ECW? Don't you own the library? You can watch yeah. like hours of me. I'm on there. <laughs> yeah, but then that. he, what he told her is super weird. He's like, Next time you see me, I want you to run up to me really fast, tap me on the back really hard. And then when I turn around, I want you to say, what do you got for me, Vince? He's like, all right. She's like, um, okay. She's, she didn't really, she thought that was weird. But then she actually did that. Next time she saw him in the hallway with a bunch of other different suits, she ran up to him, tapped him on the back. He turned around. She's like, what do you got for me, Vince? And he's like, oh, my girl. And then he gave her a big <laughs> hug and then just walked away. And she's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, uh, beyond beyond super weird you know i'm pretty sure that was like he's got all this like power shit in his head and if he can make people do what he wants i think he just loved that oh yeah he did that with uh with dewdrop that the whole dewdrop thing was because of vince he uh he saw her one day and he just you know she's a very bubbly person in general that's kind of her real character but uh, the yeah. whole drop thing he was just like i, I don't get when you're when you're doing this around and you're really bubbly and it just I mean that. Be really, really funny and be really, really, really bubbly, and that's you drop. And then it was all of this. <laughs> fucking yeah, killed sounds, that character. Sounds she like was stupid. Kid. She was such a badass in the Indies. Oh yeah, she was a badass. She was a great worker, and she's a really good big girl worker. Still hasn't won, won the chip, bro. It's fucked up. <laughs> hasn't won the what? I'm shit. She won the tag belts. I mean, like, no, the singles. She's she's still there, chance right? that... Yeah, she's still yeah, cheating with Chelsea. 
Hopefully oh, she okay. gets a, a blank one day and goes dominant. I doubt it now uh, these days. There's too many too many other talent coming in. What about Jade? Is, yeah, I was just going to mention some Jade. Mania? So I was talking about this on the last episode that got fucked up. But uh, <laughs> the, the women's chamber has been leaked by accident. There's a uh, basically a blurry picture of the women's chamber graphic, and you can make out who is in it. And Jade's actually going to be in the women's chamber, so it looks like she's going to have a call yeah. in the next couple of weeks. Okay, okay, wow. And what uh, I'm she's thinking ready. is Becky's going to end up winning the chamber, but there's going to be something in that match between Jade and Bianca because Bianca's going to be in it too, and I think those yeah. two are going to have a mania match. Maybe Jade versus um, who she threw out the rock. What's her name? Fucking Nia. Nia yeah. Jack. That would be great. I honestly would rather see her go against Bianca. Bianca would be a better there's, match. Nia there's, no real story. there's no real story between both of them fighting it. What do you mean? They just had a stare down their rumble. They had that intense stare down. They never even got to touch each other. That's the story they're right both, there. They're strong black females, pal. Exactly. That's, that's the story. That's all you need. That <laughs> is it in this <laughs> world. It's all you need. Two buff black girls staring each other down. They're Jade wants some Montez. They, they got a big pop for that stare down. People want to see that. I know they did. Mm-hmm. All the marks, did. all the inter- internet fuckers love that. That was all. The, that was like us. <laughs> Mark came out for that moment. I, I said that to one Naya, of Honestly, I don't care for Naya. I don't care what she does. She could go away for the rest of her life. I don't even care. I don't care that she came back. I never liked her to begin with. I thought she was very sloppy, yeah. and I think she's still sloppy. I think she plays a good monster heel. You should play into she that. Is. Hurt, I think she's hurting fucking, people. You're hurting her too much, bro. I think she came back like more improved, bro. I think she's boring. <laughs> Not the best promo, sure. Don't fucking turn into the rock, bro. He'll slap your ass. Man, her best <laughs> moment was my head. That's what she's been there for. My head. Oh my god, that was funny. That goes down with Titus. So, uh, the the SmackDown talking about the women. Uh, Dakota Kai came back last SmackDown mm-hmm. and sided with Bailey, even though it looked like she wasn't going to. I don't think that chair shot was uh intended for EO, to be honest. I think that chair shot was gonna be for Bailey, but Bailey turned oh. around, so uh, Dakota kind of had to play it off because every single team that Dakota's been with, she's turned on him. Right, uh, is known to turn on her teammates. This may be new then. So maybe she don't turn. She's teasing it. I like still the think they're going to. Like, yeah, you know like Orton was, like, you, you can, when Orton, you're waiting for him to like turn on Riddle. <laughs> he never did. Yeah, well, they're going to do it eventually. They were. That was the plan for Orton to feud with Riddle, but then Riddle got fired, and those plans Orton got hurt, and his plans just went to shit. Does Bailey need a sidekick like that? I don't think Bailey needs I mean, a sidekick. She's too over already as a face. The yeah. party embraced her right away. Well, I don't think I don't right. think Dakota fits the, the the Japs. No, I think uh, I think Dakota might turn on Bailey, and she might try to side with the Japs, and I think they'll eventually kick her out too, and she'll just be on her own. Mm-hmm. But I do think that she might be the mastermind behind the whole turning on turning on Bailey. I think she's going to end up being. The the whole reason why they turned on her, and then they're just gonna turn on Dakota because they don't need you have her. To call, you have to call damage control. Damage control. <laughs> you even call them damage, damage control, control anymore? The Kabuki damage control. The Asian damage, yeah, damage control. <laughs> you gotta say it like the evil Japs they are. Damage control. <laughs> no, it kind of rears off. A... It rears off at the end. Damage control. Damage <laughs> control. <laughs> Uh, like Master Shredder. Um, so a lot of a lot of I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, Becky and Rhea at Mania. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure that's going to be the match that we're going to, especially after the press conference with Becky coming out and confronting Rhea. When was the last time they had the, the, the title in the chamber match? Was oh. the first one that they had that? I've forgotten. Didn't they do the ECW? They do ECW sure. at the uh, December to Dismember. It was Elimination Chamber. Mm-hmm. You don't remember that? No, I wasn't watching it at the time. That was a terrible yeah, but... pay-per-view. <laughs> that was that's one of the reasons. That was basically the death of WWE CW. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep. 
they had a good run. I mean, they at least they brought Punk out of that bitch. Yeah, mm-hmm. was that supposed uh, to be like what NXT? What NXT is now just like some sort of like a third brand. ECW. Where young, yes. Yeah, we're young. Young should have been ECW. Come, come up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's basically what they made it into. That's what ECW was when it first brought it back out. Mm-hmm. Just for like the edgy younger talent to come up, but you know Vince's fucking ego ass could never fucking just have that ECW name next to his goddamn brand. He had to make it his own. Yep. Um, like two drops. I think Nia's gonna find a way to the title. He's, is she, you think she, is gonna be the one to beat Rhea? You think Nia can can run with that belt? I mean, so. shit. Can Nia be a good, up the women's a good position? She deserves her chance and her moment of spotlight, so it has to be her. Becky's done it many times. So, I mean, this is a chance to give her the belt and see if she can run with the ball. And it's time of her past, tribes. Right? She was champion in the past. Not yeah. long. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. I think she won. She won the Divas, I think, did she? She lost it to um Charlotte, right? No, um Bliss, Alexa Bliss. Right. She cashed, yeah, she cashed it in. On the same night she won it, she cashed it in and they beat her. It was who was it? Was it her and I can't remember, but I know she did cash it in to to lose it. So she won it for like a second. Yeah, pretty much. It's still so she's on her too- uh, resume. She's due for uh, like a run, so in reality, when you look at that part, they have to find a way for her to win. And that in it would, we only have what, one month, like one more pay per view before WrestleMania, and they're already like a fucking running the chamber. That's ball. it. That's yeah. it. I think they'll have her give a strong showing at the chamber to to keep her that monster heel, but I don't think she's gonna win it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think she wins it. And if she does end up, I, I see her having like a. Series of matches back and forth with uh, Rhea Ripley, where if she does win the title off Rhea at some point, Rhea win it back. Yeah, like a um, have a rubber match. Yeah, exactly. Like a, like a six months feud or some shit. Uh, or make same thing with like Becky. I mean, if Becky wins, they'll have like a long ass feud too with Rips. Right. Yeah. Now, what do you guys yeah, think of this uh, Judgment Day storyline going on with our Truth? I, I like it. I mean, it's still it's 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 still up there. It's not uh, not getting stale. They're finding new shit to be funny about, and I mean, there's so many uh, storylines going on within the the Judgment Day with tag team, the money in the banks right there, and then rips. So there's so many like avenues they're they're rolling with. They're cool. I like it. Like it, keeps them, it keeps them irrelevant. Looks like they're teasing Awesome Truth versus Judgment Day down the line. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that at Mania and have Awesome Truth win those belts, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I like when I really like when the veterans get like their title breaks in the end of their careers because it's always fun. Truth deserves something else. I mean, he's such yeah. a great staple in that company ever since his injury. Yeah. Even before that, you know, he's the most consistent guy there. He brings it, bro. Every time he goes to any place he's at, he brings it. Mm-hmm. That's a fucking Hall of Famer, bro. Somehow he gets his hands on the fucking money in the bank and he cashes it. Yes. <laughs> that would be the shit. For like a 24 hour period. What well, would be funny is if, uh, I think it would be funny if, if R Truth took the contract out of the briefcase and like put it in like a different. So, you know, like back in the, when they first did the clubhouse, they had the two money in the bank briefcases. Yeah. Got his, you know. So, I think it would be funny if R Truth. Took the contract out of the the, the Damien's briefcase, put it in the replica briefcase. Uh, Damien goes to cash it in. He's like, "Cash it in. Not, not in there." <laughs> I put it in the back for safekeeping. Uh, <laughs> when it expires. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, apparently the reason Damien's not cashing in is because of the Seth Rollins injury. Kayfabe. That's the reason he's given. Yeah. Like, cause, uh, because you can't have a match, right? Yeah. But they've done that in the past where someone's like beaten down and broken yeah. and injured, or whatever. Injured, but yeah, beaten down. That's, that, that's not, I, I would really like to see, like I said, the last uh, recording is I would love to see Drew win and Damon Freeze cash oh, it out. That'd be so dope. Because the four lines right there, they've been beefing with each other for a while now. <laughs> I was like, the fan of fucking Drew Side is just a day. Like, that's time for him to feud, because, you know. Yeah, that'd be like, entertaining. I'm tired of this. Fuck yeah, too. I see Judgment Day going face. 
I think they're just too much good heels right now. I think for them Fuck, to turn. No, yeah, it's and, hard. No, no, yeah. Not with Dom. Well, they would have to make fucking Dom go face somehow, and that's hard, bro. He gets so much heat. This heat is fucking inferno, bro. Hey, for me. Yeah, Latino it's heat. funny, but it's kind of stale. Like, I, I've been kind of like, where's, where, where is it going to go? That's just my question. I still like watching their segments, and it's funny, but I'm just wondering what's the payoff. I mean, they're, they're just like the top heel, so their payoff is to lose all their belts, maybe fight each other, make yeah. it up, make them in face, yeah. bring new members into the to the Judgment Day. That's how they see and it as. Who would be the, if they go up against the Awesome Truth, it'd be uh, J.D. McDonough and, and Dom? Is that the tag team? No. No, no it's, uh, it's, champs, it's Dave Priest and, and um, yeah, oh, Baller and Capri- Priest. Uh-huh. Oh shit! And then they're gonna fight. Be forgetting, the, baby. The British Strong Style on pay per view. Pete Dunne, Pete Dunne, and Tyler. And Tyler. Okay, I love those guys. Shit. Totally they forgot. Need a break too. I I wish they get that break. They're getting a nice push right now, which is unexpected. It's a quick push too, because like there's just barely character change with Pete. Yeah, as soon as he got that character change, they started pushing the team, which is yeah, it was a little weird. Because he did say in that vignette, but right before he changed that that was the last match he's gonna have with Tyler. He's gonna go off and do his own thing, and now they're teaming again. Oh man, so he, he might just turn on Tyler in the pay per view. I think a heel Pete Dunne would be better than what we've got right now. Like I don't give a fuck about this. Like you know, he just like so they can keep the title. Yeah, because the Mason Chamber is gonna be them. Or if they, if, lose, give, if they lose the belt, they fucked up they for lose the match. DIY because they should have DIY win. So it's. They were building momentum for that title belt, and they just got derailed from I don't think strong style. DIY is getting over the way they want them to get over. Nah. They just need to win the titles and hold it and have great matches. I think that's what they need. They need to rock those titles, then have, bring out all the tag teams and give us good matches like in NXT back then. That's all they did was compete and like show that they could hold those titles. That's it. Like, let them be, like, the working horse tag team titles. That's how I see DIY as. That's the only way you could use them. Because they're not promo guys. No. They're not showmen. You got, they're going to show it in the ring. So, you know, and there's so many fucking wrestlers that are pretty deadly. There's so many damn tag teams they can fucking work with that they can beat and have competitive matches with. So, I, you know, British Strong Style and them fucking had a good match, if you yeah, watched it. Yeah, that was a really good match. Fucking real good match, so... And you just gotta get that belt away from Damon Priest and Valor because it's held hostage. They're not doing shit with it. Yeah, they've held it long enough. They're exactly. Yeah. They're not really doing a whole lot. They don't have many feuds. They're just gonna go in from team to team. I totally forgot that they were the champions. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh shit, they haven't done shit with it. The shit. All the champions are becoming like that. Other than like Gunther and and Ty- and I Seth think Rollins. And Seth, yeah, that's it. Because Rhea barely defends her belts. The tag belts, they get defended, but there's no storylines with them. Roman's on that, you know, every couple of month vacation bullshit that he does. You think they're going to split the titles? See, that was the rumor going for the longest time. And they've been teasing and saying that. The Dirt Sheets have been saying that for like months now, months, ever since last year. That, oh, there's new tag titles already made. They're going to debut them tonight. They're going to split the belts. They they haven't yet, so I don't know. I think uh, maybe once they do the deal with uh, Netflix next year, I think they're going to want their own set of tag belts maybe, and they'll do it yeah. then. But I don't think they're going to be doing it anytime soon. I think they should split them up, or they'll probably split them up before, like leading into it. Leading into Mania or leading into – Or no, lead, leading, leading into uh, the, the Netflix next deal with the Netflix. Yeah, I always think they should do that. They give more tag teams – uh, an opportunity and a chance to shine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so many more cutting in from NXT. They got a lot of tag teams. They could put up some fucking tournaments. I mean, they just did the, the Dusty on NXT, so they could put some up for uh, on Raw SmackDown. Where the Creed brothers they, they at? They're doing storyline with the Alpha they're there. Academy. They're there. They're just doing uh, random matches. They're fillers mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. They they fucked up for Chad Gable. Yeah, should have. He's not even in the elimination chamber, bro. What the fuck? Gable should have won him? fighting Gunther at Mania and win the belt and have him go on for that singles run. Yeah, yep. I don't know why they don't see Gable as a star. He's got all the tools to be a star. He's got the charisma. 
He's got the look, even though he's short, he's still got a really good look. He can go in the ring. And he's a legit shooter. Yeah, he's a legit athlete. He's getting the Daniel Bryan syndrome, bro. Mm -hmm. He's getting getting the hate in the beginning. The people got to get behind him. I guess they figured because he's always been a strong tag team guy that they'll just throw him in another tag team because that's where they know him. I bet you Chad Gable's next heel run will push him to that limit and get, get into the championship. Well, they, they had the perfect opportunity with the Gunther storyline, you know, embarrassing him in front of the family and everything, and then they just dropped it afterwards. Yeah, but yeah. face versus heel, I think you want to, I mean, it'll be cool if he wins the face way, but Gable needs to come out as his heel and get some edge out of him. Well, the fans essentially turned him face, like we've been talking about. Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, it's right, time yeah. for him to move. like, push that storyline. Leave the academy. It's time for Gable to go on his own. What's going to happen with Maxine? Next year, we'll see that maybe next year. Hopefully next year. Just Maxine. stay with Maxine. Maxine just needs to stay out of the ring. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> so I want to discuss all the other companies. I want to discuss the recent happening in TNA. I don't know if you've heard about it, Casey. I don't know if you keep up so, with TNA. Their president got fired. Scott Diamore. He was, was he responsible for the whole change or no? Yeah, I mean, he was responsible from Impact Wrestling going back to TNA. He wanted to increase the budget. He wanted to put more into the into the brand. You know, obviously he saw something with bringing back TNA. He wanted to bring back that old school feeling and bring it back up and, and bring it to a possible legit third company. And I think they were going that direction. I don't know if they still will go to that direction, but I think they had a chance before they fired him to get that as the third company again. Now, I don't know what they're going to do. A lot of talent were not happy about Scott Diamore being fired. A lot of talent were there specifically for him. I know Moose, who is their champion now, just recently re-signed just because Scott Diamore was there. He said, if Diamore wow. is not here, I'm not here. They just fired him because he wanted to uh, expand the budget? He wanted to expand the budget. He made a plea to actually buy the company from Anthem. Because I think he saw the writing on the wall. I think he knew that they were trying to get rid of him because they pushed back on him, you know, trying to put more money into the brand. So he decided, mm-hmm. I'll just try and buy it myself. Since you guys don't want to put the money into it, I'll put the money into it. He made a really good offer, but I guess they just said, no, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want you to have the company. We want to run it the way we want to run it. Yeah, man, that sucks. So they just want to keep it mid-tier it seems like it they don't have enough faith in the brand to be a competitive brand against ww and aw uh, they don't want to take that chance they don't i don't know why they've got enough money to run with it they're gonna be the fifth installment of the wwe watch calling it. i mean <laughs> endeavor they're already on endeavor streaming so they've already got their <laughs> foot in the door with that company mm-hmm. that's not long the brand. i think so i think it's not long before tna ends up under the WWE flagship, probably within the Definitely next year. five to ten years, I would call, it, if not sooner. I think that's what WWE is going to do. Like how Vince monopolized the fucking WWE. I think they're going to monopolize everything by taking all and putting them all under TKO, and they still get to run their own brands, but they're under one network. Basically, what they're doing with UFC. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're going to buy everything out. Happy the Vince Mo. And then there are going to be new sex rings all around the world. <laughs> you can't stop the sex rings. And then speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of other companies as well, we've got a couple of big, big names coming into AEW. We've got uh, Sasha Banks is coming into AEW. Will Ospreay is coming into AEW. Kazuchika Okada is probably coming to AEW. Mm. Right, that's a lot Great of talent, talent just coming into that company. That's crazy talent. So, that's too much talent that's, that they don't know what to do they're with. They're not going to know what to do with all that talent. Yeah, will God. it move the needle? Will it sell more tickets? Will uh, it get more ratings? I don't know if it will I move the like needle. Or two. It, it might get a good pop. It'll get a, definitely get a good pop in Boston when uh, you see Mercedes come out. Uh, oh, yeah. It could possibly come out. So they, they <laughs> could be bringing the two for one, even though I don't think they should. It'd probably be overshadow. I would shadow Mercedes. I think Osprey will be the first one, right? He's been in there. And- Osprey's already signed. He just had his last match. Mm-hmm. So he's coming into AEW full time come Revolution. So he's going to be showing up at the when review. Is- when is Revolution? Uh, uh, okay. It's in March. It's, it's after the Chamber. It's in March. So that's going to be Sting's last match. 
Which, by the way, he just won his 25th championship in wrestling. <laughs> oh, he did? Yeah, he won the tag belt. Tag team team champs. Oh, no way. So what Ernest was talking about, he got his uh, belt at the end of the career. Yeah, he's getting, so his, he's gonna yeah. getting his last little run. They're fighting the Bucks, yep. right? Yeah, they're going to end up fighting the Bucks. They just attacked him after the match and left him bloody. And they're, they're leading so to that the whole problem. EVP thing. Right, yeah. Good for them. Make some business and out of Matthew it. Matthew now. They're, they're going with the corporation theme now. The corporate mm-hmm. Bucks. Yeah. I don't That's get a character. Who yeah, exactly. the characters since they're fucking indie? No, they haven't. They've just been spot monkeys. They're just party bucks. Yeah, party on winning, party on gold. Yeah, guys. Let <laughs> me steal all the fucking moves in the WWE. <laughs> just me steal everyone's yeah, super kick party. Yeah. Look at those spammers. If they're playing video games, bro, they're spamming the super kick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're doing. Spamming the fucking super kick. But I think it's, Finally, I think it's cool what, what they're doing. How many years to get a character development? God yeah. damn, Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up to the yeah. Bucks. They have character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a little Bucks. bit of character in, in Bullet Club. A little bit. They do shit. Throw up the fucking too sweet. They were dicks. Then, they were dicks in Bullet Club. They were egotistical dicks. Okay. <laughs> that was their, their fucking growth from that to a fucking corporation. Two copied fucking characters. <laughs> See? Their factions are all copied. Motherfucker. Those guys are like... She comes to copy... Like, what is that shit called? Uh, the copy machine? The What's the... 3D printers. The 3D printing wrestlers, guys. I think it's funny with yeah, they're, they're leading into the whole corporate shit, though, now. That's cool. I mean, at least they have characters. So it's cool. They're so, like, they're so demeaning in front of their matches, too. They had, like, a, a match against a jobber. And they're like, Hey, man. Good job. Give me a high five. Give me a fist bump. That's entertaining what do you need now. It'll be cool if they have like a development monster to back them up right now. What you mean? Like like a oh, diesel. Oh, okay. A, a heater. Yeah. Someone that no one knows and you can just bring them along and fucking have them right there. They should bring, and develop they should bring them. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. He's yeah, he wears a mask for himself. Right? Yeah, he's making a name for himself across the Indies. He's in multiple promotions right now. Cool. That means the fucking death match is big. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Do you hear Mick Foley wants to have one final match? Yeah. A death match. He wants one final match. He wants to drop 100 pounds and have a death match for his last hurrah. Yeah, like that's his Who's motivation to lose weight so he can Who's get to a death match. With? I say Cardona. I think he said Moxley. Oh, he, he said Moxley? Moxley or Cardona, yeah. But I say Cardona. I would like to see Cardona versus Foley. Yeah, that a promo. Yeah, Moxley's not the best on the mic. He's a little too oh, serious. Sucks. All he does is cuss. <laughs> Moxley just cusses. Like, that's I it. think him and Mox would have a better. I think they'd fuck each other up. That's like, a, yeah, we... that's... Moxley will maybe bring out the best out of Mick in a hardcore match. Mm-hmm. I've never seen Cardona, so... Hey, man, I Cardona has flowers. He's a deathmatch king, okay? Yeah, he's the indie uh, ind- indie god, right? He's the indie god. He's the deathmatch king. Oh, I, can't, I still see him as a writer. I can't get over it. What? Oh, Zack Ryder. I still see him as Zack Ryder. That's all you've got to be. Zack Ryder. Every time he's yeah. dog. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> that video gets a lot of plays on our Instagram. People love that <laughs> shit. Roses. This fucking music video. Violets are blue. Yeah, that shit is funny. He's- I mean, he still uses the term broski and all that shit on the podcast and shit. So he still talks. I love, like, how, I love how, his, how his wife is killing it in the WWE. She did an interview with uh, Chris Van, Flel, or Van Fleet, whatever Van Fleet. his name is. Uh, yeah, I, I actually met him at that um, the Circle Six Circle show Six. that we went to. Oh, yeah? We were both waiting by the bathroom. Yeah, yeah he sure was chilling. That was dope. A few words with him. But in that interview, Chelsea had mentioned how like she actually liked the Divas era and how she would have fit in into that era because it was like really girly and feminine as a push she's like she didn't get into this business to be like a ufc fighter you know and like now the girls these days are like a little bit more athletic uh the moves in the ring i guess a little bit more technical or whatever yeah um, but, but she's still i like her because she's a throwback to the divas the way she is yeah exactly yeah exactly exactly yeah like we need both we need the both the we need both divas to to show the different like styles a, yeah need a flamboyant character and uh some good in ring action. Yeah, and she does that. I think she's she's a beast. 
She's yeah, like, she I think she's like the female R Truth, dude. <laughs> Chelsea Green is fucking killing everything she does. They brought back her. Uh, they let Samantha Irvin say her yeah, name. Chelsea. <laughs> that was her. <laughs> she requested that come back. Actually, why did they take no. it away from her? No idea. They just felt like they she didn't need it. I guess I don't know. It was weird. No, no, no. It, it fits her perfectly. perfectly. Yeah, yeah, it was weird because that was the only person she stopped doing the over the top entrances for. Everybody else, she stayed yeah. the same except for Chelsea. Yeah. It's went viral on her when she kept doing the Chelsea. Yeah. That's when the Samantha girl got some love as an announcer. Oh yeah, <laughs> like she got it because of Chelsea Green's announcing. Like that's what got my eye at least. Whenever she was going Chelsea Green, I like that. I was like, this girl got flavor, so. I like that. I like Chelsea. I like. Hopefully, Mick Foley. I mean, hopefully, he doesn't die. But if he does it, let's. You know. Hopefully, he doesn't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All of Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> I think he. Re- I think Ric Flair really wants to die in the ring, bro. I think so too. Fuck. Can't retire. Yeah, he survived everything to... else. Fucking plane crashes. Fucking <laughs> and suicide. <laughs> <laughs> All the drugs and the pussy. He's on his death. He's right. Man, he survived. He's probably Man. drunk right now. <laughs> Rick gimmick is the sex ring, fool. Mm-hmm. Ooh, limousine driving, bitches fucking in an airplane <laughs> doing cocaine. Did, didn't he get in trouble recently? He's like telling on AEW. He like told the crowd like, uh, meet him at his hotel. Like he ran that old promo back and yeah, it was, like, it was, it was at his tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are too <laughs> sensitive. Come on, it's Ric Flair. You know that's his shtick. That's your, that's your bro. <laughs> It's just some girls followed. Some girl of a girl. Like, yeah, I want to get fucked by Ray. He's like, no husbands, no boyfriends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool back good. then, right now. He's creepy. Fuck. That's sad, bro. The cool shit you used to do when you're young becomes creepy when you get old. <laughs> yeah. But then also, too, I mean, like, his kids, it probably uh, wasn't the best life for them. Rick had his fun, but then the whole... Family dying. If you have, if you're leaving your family behind like that, uh, it's, it's probably not, you know, some some emotional damage, yeah, you know, so to speak. But you know, she's Scarlett's Scarlett's following her dad's footsteps. She's becoming a great wrestler herself. She's just she's fucking in a, smashing in a... through, and she's killing it. She's like the number one. I think she's still the number one diva. I mean, we're a female wrestler. Sorry. Yeah, you could say that. I mean, but don't fans get annoyed by her sometimes? Like I feel like it's when like we, fans get enough of her, yeah, it's like, she just sometimes she uh, just becomes a little. She, she gets she, overplayed. Yeah, she gets pushed sure. a little too much sometimes. I mean, that's why she yeah. gets these breaks. I mean, let her get injured, let her be like held back, but no one works better yeah. than her, bro. That's why she's always up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she get a big pop when she gets when she comes back. Yeah, probably she takes a long break. Anything else you guys think of we might want to discuss before we wrap it up? I mean, not, let's not discuss. Let's. Uh, Predict the elimination chamber matches. Guy and girl, do that. what do you guys predict? Uh, right off, Casey. Drew and um, Becky. Yeah, Drew All goes right. on to face uh, Seth, and Becky goes on to face uh, Rhea. What about you, Chris? I think Randy goes over. I'm gonna go with, right. for the women. I'm gonna go with Becky as well. She needs. Super she deserves Becky. that push. Who you, bro? I'm with Casey. I think Drew and Becky makes the most sense. No, uh, three for Becky. Rhea hasn't gotten any comeuppance on Naya. She hasn't gotten the better of her, so that's obviously a storyline right there built in. But it seems like they really want to push Becky back into that main event spot. I'm going to say, you done? Yeah. All right. That's all right. Good. That was going to cut you off. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to say for the guys, I think he's been pushed to the side right now. Well, he had a rocket ship up his butt damn fucking back. And they kind of like paused him. And I think a WrestleMania win will give him that fucking extra, extra he needs. The extra swag. Yeah. That's mine. All right, the tag right. teams? Or and Gunther? Well, Gunther can't wrestle outside of the United States right now. Oh, so he's not going to uh, be. He's going to be in WrestleMania. He'll be at Mania. Okay. So most likely they'll have like a. Like a match with the fucking Imperial with New Day to cover that up. Yeah, probably have that. Um, maybe a women's tag match yeah. with uh. Do we? Is there uh, a Judgment Day versus um, Judgment Day versus 
British strong style. Yeah, yeah. I think Judgment Day goes over on that because I think they're gonna they're gonna have a title match at Mania yeah. and drop those belts. Yeah, I think it's this time that they drop those belts. It's become stale, and uh, like you uh-huh. said, Ernest, they're just holding on to them and doing nothing. Yep. It's probably just a good visual when Judgment Day is out there to have the belts like all over their shoulders. And oh shit, yeah, that was a great visual when they, they all had belts. You know, when Dom had the North American, they had the tag. We had the the women. Kind of had that four horsemen feel. Yeah, I mean that's how you kind of want it when you're in the faction, right? You mm-hmm. they all got to rock the belts. Has to. That's the only way to like make it look amazing. Mm-hmm. DX, evolution, mm-hmm. evolution, everything. Um, when uh, Bobby Lashley's first group didn't they all have the titles? Yep, yep, they all had belts. Mm-hmm. What are they called again? Hurt Shit. business. The hurt business. Okay, hurt, hurt business. Why can't they just be called that? Oh, because that's MVP shit, huh? It doesn't have to be MVP shit. It could be still the hurt business without MVP, but they don't want to brief cash the same stable name, I guess. Pride. The pride. Well, that was the T's name. <laughs> that was the T's name, but they're not using it on TV, so I don't think they're going to go with it. Oh, that's Black Excellence, bro. That's, <laughs> that's called the, the new. Call them the new black Excellence. Yeah, we black and we excellent. That's it. Black power. <laughs> <laughs> you know, go back mm-hmm. Isn't the nation? Yeah, isn't B Fab in there now? Yeah, that could have been fucking Candice. Could have been. You mean Bianca? Oh, she Candace? What the fuck? Candace LeRae? Bianca, <laughs> god damn. <laughs> yes. Candace LeRae with the pair of wings. <laughs> the black guys. What the fuck? Uh, she was part of the sex ring. Interesting. Three black guys and a white girl. <laughs> that was fucking Vincent Orton. Where have I seen this? That was one of Vincent Orton. I've was, seen that yeah. movie a couple of times. <laughs> that was, that's in the lawsuit. He. That's one of his fantasies. He was, <laughs> uh, that was in the, <laughs> was it, who was that black girl that had the... T- the, the bondage character with the two oh, two wrestlers. Oh, I remember her. Oh, what was her name? Oh, yeah. And then who was the guy? There was the Bashams. The Bashams, yeah. <laughs> the Bashams. And they were bondage I guys. That was a fucking um, into Vince's life right there. Fucking crazy guy. Well, I guess that was a pretty good episode where we bounced back. Now we got four. Yeah, we enjoyed this uh, episode. I'm can't wait to watch the Raw right now. Same, same. I just want to give a shout out to set up. everybody that's uh, following the Instagram. Much love, much appreciated. We're getting a lot of traction. We actually got uh, Rob Van Dam. We got Ken Anderson, and we got Mickey Gal from the UFC. <laughs> All three of those guys liked uh, one of our reels, so that's pretty cool to see. It's getting out there to the to the wrestlers of the world. The actual Fuck yeah. Man. Ken Anderson, I saw the one that uh, you said that he liked. I was like, oh, wow. Ken, uh, yeah, I just, I saw it. <laughs> All the notifications. Why won't this notification go away? Why Why is this person so special? I'm like, Ken Anderson? Nah, it's not real. And I went on the page. And I'm like, it's really him. You <laughs> know, this is cool. Hey, man, I mean, that's yeah. awesome. That's so awesome. Thank, I want to thank Chris for coming by. Joining Thank us you again. Guys. Thank you guys again. Yeah, like I said, it's really Thanks. great to talk wrestling with real fans. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. It's the best. Likewise, man. Fuck yeah. We're the fortunate of few. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll catch you all the next episode. Bring it back next Thanks. time, junkies. Holla. Peace. Wrestling junkies. Wrestling junkies. Pod.com. Make sure to go check it out. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Peace.